Hey guys, if you're using code blocks, you're going to need to do something for this episode in order to get the most modern C++ standard. So if you're using code blocks, come up here at the top to settings, click on settings, and then come down to compiler, and then a little box is going to pop up. And what you want to do is make sure you're in compiler settings, and you're going to come down here and look for the checkbox that says have G++ follow the C++ 11 ISO standard. This is going to make sure that your compiler is using the most modern C++, which you're going to need for this tutorial. If you don't have this uh, checkbox down here, that probably means you installed code blocks wrong. Or, or, or something, or perhaps if you're on Linux, they don't have C++11 ready. I'm not really sure. Just post the, in the comments if you're having trouble with this tutorial, and we will help you out. Hey guys, Ben here with another C++ tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about random number generators. And now what a random number generator does is, as you would think, generate a random number. This is going to be super useful in our games whenever we want to generate, for instance, a dice roll. Let's say we're making a Dungeons & Dragons game, we want to say, well, you need to roll a dice that has six sides. So we're going to generate a number between one and six and use the outcome of that roll to determine how much damage he does or if he, if he dodged an attack or something like that. If we're making, for instance, a dungeon RPG game and we're attacking a snake, we could look at the player's attack and defense or and the snake's defense and speed and be like, well, let's say there's a 30% chance you're going to hit the snake. So we could generate a number between 0 and 100, and if it's less than or equal to 30, then we say you hit the snake, otherwise you missed the snake. So the first thing we want to do to get our random number generator is go to the top here and type include random. Pretty simple. So this is going to include the random number generator library that we're going to be able to use. So First, we need a random number generator variable. It's going to be a class just like a string where it has some extra stuff with it. And the way we get it is we type default random engine. Now this is just like if we had typed int or float. This is a variable. We're making a variable here. This is what's called the type, right? Int is a type, float is a type, default random engine is also a type. But it's a little more complex because it's a class. It has some extra stuff. We'll learn more about classes later when we make our own. But just know that you use this as a variable with some extra stuff. Now, of course, we need to name it. I'm going to call mine random generator and then a semicolon. So here's our random number generator. Now, we can't generate numbers just yet. What we need to do is define a range that the random number generator is going to generate in. So let's start with just a dice roll. The way we get a dice roll is we need to make another variable. This variable is a range. And the way we get this variable is we type uniform. And since we're generating integers, we type int underscore distribution. Now this, this code is, is long, right? These variable names are really long, but the code is actually pretty simple. Once you remember how to do these, it's really easy to get your random number generators working. So this part's a little weird. You need to type a left angle bracket and then int and then a right angle bracket. Now, if you don't do this, I think it'll still work. Let's try it, and we'll call our distribution dice roll. No, it doesn't work. So you do need to type int here. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. This basically just tells it you are an int distribution. You might actually be able to change this to a different variable, but we're not going to do that for now. So we're going to call it dice roll, and now we need to tell it what its generation range is. So we're going to put parentheses here at the end, and we're going to say, I want you to generate a number between 1 and 6. So 1 is the minimum, and 6 is the maximum. And then we put a semicolon. So now, anytime we want to roll our dice, all we do is use this dice roll value and this random number generator. So let's go ahead and roll our dice. I am rolling a... And then here's where we're going to roll our dice. We just type dice roll and then parentheses. And inside these parentheses, we tell it which random generator we, we want to use. We can have multiple random number generators. So we're going to use this random number generator right here, the only one we have. And then we'll do an end L. So there we have it. This is our dice roll. We should get a number between 1 and 6. Let's go ahead and hit play. There we go. I am rolling a 3. So see, we got a random number. Now let's do it again and see if we get a different number. Whoa, we got a 3 again. See that? That's another 3 up there. Why did that happen again? That's, I guess that was just random chance, wasn't it? Let's see if it happens again. We're going to hit continue again. Oh, I rolled a 3 again. Something isn't right. Well, the reason we're not getting truly random numbers every time 
is because we didn't seed our random number generator. Now, if I copy paste this and do it a few times, right, we're going to get random numbers, 3, 1, 3, 6, 5. But if we run the program again, we're going to get the same random numbers, 3, 1, 3, 6, 5. And the reason is this random engine, this random generator is using a default seed. Now, if you've ever played Minecraft, you know that you can give it a world seed, and that'll determine what your world looks like. The world is still randomly generated, right? And it's randomly generated for like forever in all directions. However, if you give it a certain seed, the next time you play the game, and if you use that same seed, you're going to get the same randomly generated world, and you'll be able to share that seed with your friends. That's what a seed is. So what we do is we seed the random number generator with something different. And to do that, all we do is whenever we make our random generator variable, we at the end here, we put some parentheses, and we type our seed. So say I want to have the seed 6543. We would do that. So now I have a different seed. So when I run it, I should get a different output. 42133. Three. See, it's different. But if I run it again, 42133, three, right? Because the seed is always the same each time we hit play. What we need to do is give our random number generator a different seed every time we run the game. So it's truly random. And what is something that's always changing in our program? The answer is time. Time is always changing. So what we can do is use time to seed our random number generator and because time is constantly increasing every second then whenever we run our program it's going to be using a different seed so what we do to get time is we do include up here at the top and then see time so now we have time all we do is in here instead of 6543 we're going to type time parentheses null and then in parentheses or if you want you can type time zero either one. So what this does is it says, give me the time in seconds right now. And I think it's been counting since like 1980 or something. It's just counting seconds and it just keeps going. So it's going to give you the time and then it's going to uh, seed the random number generator with it. So this is going to be different each time we run the game. Now you only want to seed your random number generator one time. So you're going to do it right on creation and you never want to seed it again. The thing is, since this is counting in seconds, if you hit play and run the game and then hit play again before one second has passed, then you're going to get the same random numbers because it's this time zero value is going to be the exact same. But the chances of that happening are pretty, pretty small. You're Programs usually don't run for less than one second, so this is perfectly adequate and it's going to be fine. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if we get a bunch of random dice rolls. 3, 2, 1, 2, 6. 3, 3, 6, 5, 2. See, it's different every time. 5, 1, 1, 5, 6, right? And then later, if we wanted to do something, we could be like, if dice roll random generator is equal to 6, we could be like, see out critical hit right we can use this to to implement some game logic we can we can use the random number generator to make something interesting happen okay so what if we don't want an integer distribution remember that example i told you about doing um like a number between zero and a hundred to damage a snake instead a better way would be to generate a number between zero and one we're going to generate instead of an integer because remember integers are something you can count on your hand let's generate a floating point number so it's going to be a number between zero and one it could be 0 0.3 it could be 0 0.44444 it could be anything like that and the way we do that is really really similar so let's let's rename our variable instead of being rolling a dice we're going to say attack roll or something like that i guess that's an okay name and then all we do is instead of uniform int distribution, we say uniform real distribution. And then instead of int here, we type float, because that's the type of distribution we want. We want a floating point distribution. And now we need to put our range here. So we're going to type 0.0f. Remember, the f is just an extra thing that says this is a float. You could get rid of the f, and it would be a double and it wouldn't really matter, but just use an F when you're using a float. So we're going to say 0.0F is the minimum, 1.0F is the maximum. So now, whenever we want to do an attack roll, we could say, see out, I am attacking snake. Snake. And then we're going to roll our attack. So we're going to say, attack roll, right? And then we're going to give it our generator. You always do... The distribution first and then inside parentheses you say which generator you're going to use we're going to say random generator you should only need one random generator for your entire program usually there's usually not a reason to have multiple 
random number generators, but this gives you the option to if you want. That's what's great about this new random number generator in C++11. Well, that's one of the great things about it. Okay, so let's see out this, and we should each time get a random number between 0 and 1, because this is going to be a float. There we go. 0.82, let's run it again, we got 0.92, let's run it again, we got 0.3, see we're getting a random number generator. And then let's go a step further, let's store this in a float, let's say float uh, attack equals this attack roll random number generator. Because remember we can take a float and store it in a variable. So let's get rid of this right here, we're just going to say I am attacking snake. And then what we're going to do is process this attack. If attack is less than 0 0.3, because 0 0.3 out of 1 is 30%, right? Very simple math here. If attack is less than or equal to 0 0.3 F, excuse me, this is a float, optional, but it's a good thing to do. We're going to see out, I hit the snake. Yay. New line. Else, remember we have our else statement. Else, see out, I missed the snake. Oh no. So remember, an if else statement works like this. If this is true, so if attack is less than or equal to 0.3, we're going to see out this. Otherwise, we're going to see out this. Pretty simple logic here, and it, we've already got our first little attack program. Now, it doesn't really do much. So we got, I am attacking the snake, I missed the snake, oh no. If we run it again, I hit the snake, yay. See, and if we wanted to, we could see out this attack variable and see what our role actually was. So here's how we're going to be doing random attacks. And in the next episode, we're doing our first challenge. We're going to make a little combat simulation. So you're going to use this exact stuff right here. See, make sure you remember this when we go to the challenge episode. Stay tuned. We are going to make our first video game.